right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Wherever you're at in the world, welcome to Money Moves Sundays, July 19th, 2020. I'm your host, Jay Rock, and we're going to take a look at the headlines and news and the charts and expectation for this coming week. More volatility ahead, or will it be a lull? We will see. Let's go ahead and share this out. I have gone live on Facebook on GTA's homepage. We are going to post it on other pages right now. So give me one second and then we will get started. So if you don't mind sharing it out on your page, I would appreciate that. We have some exciting things coming in the near future within the next four or five months. And it's gonna change the way things are done in a certain industry. So be ready, stay tuned. Yes, All right, that shared out. Let's see here. Go to, there we go. All right, so thank you for tuning in, everybody. Money Moves Sunday. Let's see what the markets are saying. First thing I do is take a look at the upcoming news so we don't get blindsided. We check this prior to every session and make sure we see what's going on. You can never predict instant news turmoil of economic, political, or social events that can send the market reeling in one direction or the other. And you always want to be prepared at least a little bit by checking out the news sources that are that they know are upcoming and the headlines for the day to see what others are saying. So nothing really going on this evening as Wellington, Sydney, and Tokyo will prepare to open up in about uh, the next few hours, the actual market will open in about 45 minutes and it'll just be slow for a couple of hours. And then when Tokyo opens, things will start to pick up. And then London, about five hours after that. So London opens in 10 hours and 45 minutes from now. But as we see, not a lot happening. Only CAD news on Tuesday, core retail sales expected to still be negative. Not a lot on Wednesday. We'll still get crude oil inventories, show you the chart of oil. And then the weekly unemployment claims for the US dollar expected to gain 1.2 million jobs on the uh, private payroll. And then on Friday, we're gonna get some Euro news, French and German flash services. Let's say it moves the market a little bit. Really, I have not seen that in a consistent pattern. So let's see what the actual headline news are saying. Go to CNBC and see what's happening. Netflix closes flat. Uh, actually, they, their shares drop. They, the stocks close flat. We're going to take a look at that. And obviously, we're still in the midst of this manufactured pandemic. Not saying the virus isn't real. It is real. It does have an effect. But so does the flu and other Illnesses, disease, viruses, tuberculosis, that kind of thing. They kill people every year, but they have really hyped this up. And in the last week, we've found out more evidence has surfaced in certain states of exaggerating the numbers, flat out lying. And friend, if it was that serious, there would, there would not be a need to lie about the numbers. That's why I do not believe what comes out of the news. Most of it, I look at it and take it with a grain of salt because they have been lying and using the power of the airwaves, the media, television, radio, paper for decades and decades to control people's thoughts and minds. And they have a lot of people that will just believe whatever they say. So a lot of upheaval that has happened around the world because of this coronavirus. And they're saying that one state, they're public ministry, Ministry of Health, inflated the numbers by 90%. Here in my own state of Texas, they had to remove 3,700 because they found out they did not have anything to do with coronavirus or the death of the people based on COVID-19. So a lot of manufacturing false information lies. What do you believe, friend? You need the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, to help you know what's true and to understand and to have wisdom from above. Other than that, you're just going to fall for anything, believe anything, even well-intentioned. 
So a lot of news is going to be on coronavirus. This guy, Jamie Dimon, the head of J.P. Morgan Chase, CEO there, he says, nobody knows what's coming next. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't have the spirit, that's why. But I could tell you what I see, the writing is on the wall that we are going to take a leg down. It says July, we've got August, September, October, and then the voting for the U.S. presidential election is going to be November the 5th or 6th on that Tuesday. Uh, seventh or eighth, we have to look on the calendar and see. Let me check that out real quick. And I will tell you, it's going to be Tuesday, November the, well, it'll be the third or the 10th, whichever one they put it. Normally it's the first, uh, first week. So Tuesday of the first week. So my guess is probably be the third. And that will move the cycle of whatever happens in the world, the world moves based on that. I personally believe Donald Trump will be reelected and then that will send the markets back up. COVID-19 will fade in the wind and they'll be looking for the next pandemic that they can pull on the world to try to vaccinate everybody. Again, this is just my personal opinion. You believe what you want, study and show yourself approved to have understanding. But I'm gonna show you where I see the market it looks like it's headed in the next uh, couple of months prior to that, like I said, we're in July, we got August, September, October, and then November, we've got about uh, three and a half months for things to happen. I think in that time, a lot could happen. I think the market is going to leg down, probably go back to 20,000, maybe 18 or 15, and then it's going to bounce hard with the expectation that Donald Trump will be reelected. They're trying to pin all of this on him and say that he is the cause behind it. Craziness, pure crazy. Anybody with a thinking mind, you can just step back and say that absolutely crazy what they say and believe and repeat. But uh, we had the strongest and most vibrant economy. We had lowest unemployment rate among minorities in the history of the United States. Many great things were happening until this hit. And again, a lot to talk about there, but we will see. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, they had record trading profits that boosted their firms and their stock prices over the last month and over the last quarter, where they were saying that for the second quarter, like Goldman Sachs made $2.6 billion in trading. Where'd that money come from? Well, it had to come from somebody. Those that were losing came from 401ks and those people that took a dive in the market. Goldman Sachs was probably short the market from February. And then when the bottom hit around 18, they were probably buying it back up. And that's how they made their money on the downside. And then back on the upside made $2.6 billion. Okay, a lot to cover on the charts. So let's go ahead and take a look at the indices and see what they're saying. Remember, I've been telling you that the US dollar could leg down. It's setting up on the longer time frame that it's preparing to continue down, but we just surpassed that double bottom back here in March when the market uh, fell and then back up. So what will the dollar index, what will the US dollar do? The reserve currency of the world currently, but everything is pushing toward gold and cryptocurrency. You need to understand, know and understand about that in order to be ready for the changes in the economic system of things Again, I believe this is my personal opinion, but it's all making sense. I've believed it for years that they're going to have a digital chip or nano tattoo as it's now being called in your right hand or in your forehead. That's going to have all of your banking information, medical record, criminal record, driving record, school history, job history, anything and everything about you will be in this digital tracking chip in a major mainframe frame computer, probably in satellite technology that will identify you in a heartbeat. Facial recognition is coming and going, and then it's gonna be the tattoo that they can uh, find you and know exactly everything about you in a moment from a satellite recognition based on that implantable chip. They're saying that it's likely to be through a vaccine. Bill Gates is pushing that, saying that everybody needs to be vaccinated prior to another mass gathering. That means churches. That means people going to parties or bars or hanging out at the beach before anybody can get together in mass groups. They need to all be vaccinated. Really? That's what's happened. That's what they're saying. Go and look it up. 
you don't believe me, check out the videos on YouTube or look it up and you will see that's what they're saying. So they create these viruses in labs and then spread it to the world and say it came from a bat. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. They create these things because they have sinister motives. You better believe it. Don't call me crazy because I know I'm not. And I've been saying this for years, label crazy for years. And now people are starting to see, man, everything you were saying, it's all looked like it's coming to pass. Well, yeah, very interesting, huh? Because you got to see ahead, look into the future and kind of think a little bit, dwell on it and start connecting the dots and you can find out what the picture is going to look like. So I think the US dollar could potentially bounce here. It did take out that low, could bounce a little bit or the bottom could fall out over the next uh, couple of weeks or months until uh, the election. So let's take a look back here, 2016, okay? Here was the election of 2016 when Donald Trump got elected right in this area and the market, let's see, right around here, November. Market dipped a little bit, or US dollar, I'm sorry, dipped and then rallied. And then for the next year and a half, it came all the way down, the value of the dollar. Then we bounced and a lot of consolidation, a big chop. And what I teach is when you are getting ready to change directions, you're going to have volatility with big swings back and forth. And that's what took place here. This was a long range bound trend up consolidation period. And then finally, drop took out the lows, jumped way up here, dropped back down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then we came back and double bottom. And the potential is as we approach this election that we are possibly gonna go down a little bit lower. And then when the election comes, we may bounce up a little bit and then come down lower. So this is a lower high from this high over here. I'm expecting the US dollar to continue to fade as digital crypto and new economic policies come into play. Just be expecting that and learn how to profit by doing that. Check us out at globaltradingarmy.com and we will help you understand how to read charts, analyze economic situations and make sound decisions. Make a little bit of money here and there. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Make a little bit of money and you can grow your portfolio exponentially over the course of three to five or seven years. If you think you only have a one-year plan or two-year plan to make money, you got your priorities wrong. You need to have a, at least a seven to 15-year plan to grow your money, work things out, and the first place to start is by learning how to do it. GlobalTradingArmy.com. Find us on our free Telegram chat room. Download the Telegram app and down, go to GTA chat room in Telegram, and you'll find our free public chat room. You can converse with us there. This is the British pound over the last... Uh, couple of years let me bring it in a little bit more and show you what i'm seeing here so this is over the last four or five years come back a little bit further you see we're way down here put in a low at the beginning of this year and then we bounced up it is forming a flag pattern very nice right now i'm, I'm expecting that this may pop and go higher though we do have a nice down channel going right through here so the potential that we come back down first and then rally is there, but I'm somewhat bullish on the British pound at the moment. Let's go a little bit more back in time and see. This goes back to, uh, put it back here, 2007. And you see the British pound is kind of curving. We've got a higher low here, kind of curving up a little bit. On the short term, we could drop and then rally. On the long term, the overall projection is the British pound is going to push back up. So that could happen next week. We could drop and pop. Could happen over the next couple of weeks. We just have to wait and see. Longer time frame determines overall direction. Shorter time frame determines your best entry. So a couple of pairs, currencies that are somewhat iffy, not really knowing exactly what they're going to do right now, whether they're going to drop and then pop, or they're just going to start moving in their intended overall long-term direction. We just have to wait and see. Australia. Currency had a big drop off, rallied up, double top, and then slowly consolidating upward. Is it going to break out and then put in what's called a bull trap, break out here and then plummet? Well, that remains to be seen. But they like to take out tops and bottoms just beyond it a little bit. So I think they may bring Australia just up here, breach that 70.2 mark, 
come to 70.3 or four, and then bring it all the way back down. The currency will lose value. I do not see uh, Australia's currency continuing to rise. If we go to longer time frame, you see a nice V-shaped recovery, but I think that it's going to trail back off a little bit in the coming days. Okay, let's look at the charts. Of the chart of oil. Going to take a look at that real quick. On the monthly time frame here. You see, we're still month of July. We got ten days left, and this is a very, very nice setup for a drop off. And I've been saying I think oil will come back to twenty five or twenty, could even come back to fifteen dollars a barrel. But I would like to see twenty five. I'd be very happy if it comes to twenty five. Much happier if it comes to twenty. So setting up for sells on this based on the chart patterns and the way I trade what I use in my technical indicators. Here's the weekly time frame, big drop bounced up. And every week it's just been getting higher and higher, but it's hitting that wall right there at uh, $41. And I'm thinking that oil is going to drop hard and fast in just a matter of two weeks when it does boop, boop, like this right here, just straight down. It could shed 15 to $20 in two weeks when it comes down, when it's ready. Daily time frame, a lot of consolidation as you see up here, same thing, pushing that wall and I'm expecting a drop if we look at Friday. We had Thursday and Friday, so Tuesday, Wednesday push up, Thursday and Friday came back and it dropped hard on Friday and then bounced all the way back up. This is called a hanging man candle, very bearish setup, just like this was, but this negated it, a bullish engulfing the very next day and then followed by a long, bearish harami where it just came, I'm sorry, Marabosu candle came straight down. And then the next candle was a harami setup. However, it's consolidation trying to hold these levels, but I think it's going to break down and fall. Oil is a great commodity to trade. It's just been a lot of patience required for this. When it does drop, then a lot of money will be made. On the US Dow Jones Dirty 30, here we see it has a long bullish candle, but last month, this was the month of June, big rally up and a big drop back down, very bearish. Next month we opened, came down, then rallied up, and now we're coming back down. I expect for the month of July to end over the next 11 days. That's basically gonna be five, let's see, probably about seven or eight. So actually we got 10 trading days left in July because it's going all the way till next Friday. So over the next 10 days, I expect some volatility, but I think it's going to end up way back down here at 24,900. That's going to be about 1,700 pip drop off. We want to be setting up for that. I do not think it's going to go higher. Uh, it could come down and be a small green candle. So for the next month, we open around 26,000, put in an upper wick, and then we fall for the month of August. And then August, September, October, maybe straight down. And then Trump gets reelected. And then that next candle is going to be a big bounce straight up. And the Dow is going to start to recover based on him having control for the next uh, four years and putting in more of his economic policies that brought jobs back to America and created the lowest unemployment. Okay. So that is what it looks like on the monthly time frame, weekly time frame, uh, cup and handle pattern. But I think the, uh, the potential is that we're going to fall. We may open in any rally on this. It's uh, going to be a great selling opportunity. So we'll be looking for that in the overnight hours London session that it pushes up and rallies. I will say, give me a line here. Yeah, 27,100 or 200, maybe it'll put in a wick. Let's see, this one was, uh, hold one second. Yeah, about 27,180 was where last week's high point may get to that or stop short or take it out. It just depends. There's three options there. Equal, just below or just above. Anywhere in that area, we're at 26, 633. That's about you know, 600, almost 600 pips, 550. To that area, I think we could go up there. It's just a speculation at this moment. And then it'll wick and come way back down and close in the red for the week around 26,000, maybe even lower. And then over the next couple of weeks, we'll fall. That is the expectation, okay? Just like here, we had a cup and handle that formed here and then the bottom fell out when 
they determined it was time and they used COVID as an excuse. Yes, I did say that. If you don't think backroom deals and insider trading happens, you need a little more education, a little more understanding, but there's still, well, that's against the law, man. The people, the biggest lawbreakers run our countries. That's just the way it is. And they are controlled by big money. They write the laws for us to be bound up while they do whatever the heck they want and rape and pillage our financial situation. Hopefully we'll change that in the coming years and help more people become financially educated and make money, be on the right side of history. So that is the US 30. Anything anybody wants to look at, let me know now. I'm gonna look at Chef Jappy and then uh, Pound Aussie. So if you've got a pair you'd like me to look at, I'll do a couple pairs from our private members login on the webinar Zoom, and then we'll see out there in Facebook land. Welcome everybody. Take a pair from you guys on that end. So get them ready. And I will be looking at it here momentarily. Now with Pound Aussie, let's see on the monthly time frame. You know, it's right here at this major level of support. It did come up and back down. We're at 179.62. We called a uh, our last entry at 179.50 and expecting that this is going to still rally for the month of July. But remember what I said when looking at the pound index, it could drop, come a little bit lower. But here's the weekly time frame. So this week, I'm expecting maybe a little drop and then it's going to rally. So I'm going to be looking because it's put in a nice four candle NR4. It is a well-known chart pattern for professional traders. Four candles putting in a base or a top, and then the reversal comes. So we've got four candles putting in the base. The fifth one is going to form here in about 30 minutes. And then I think that it'll put in a low, probably drop down, and then it's going to rally. And any as the lower it goes, the better the buying opportunity. That is my opinion on Pound Aussie. So we'll be looking for that. Here you go on the... Daily time frame, you see where it came from, 2.06, let's call it, all the way down to 1.78 something. So that was a, a gain of about, or a drop from that point, 20, about 2,800 pips. Even if we get back to this level right here, at 1.90, that is going to be roughly 1,100 pips, 1,000 to 1,100. I think that could happen in, in two weeks or less. 1,100 pips, just get in and ride with it. Don't move your stop loss too tight. It fluctuates heavily, but once it starts going and gets in a groove, it's going to do it. And like you see here on the daily, started coming down and then a big bounce. Anybody that moved their stop loss too tight on the daily candles, they got stopped out. And it's always difficult to determine. That's the biggest question I get or frustration with people. I don't know when to get in and when to get out. I can't figure out my entries and exits. Well, I'm going to show you globaltradingarmy.com. We show you how to get in, when to enter, and when to adjust your stop loss. And even here with this, it came way down. And then in two days, boop, all the way back up. Let's just see how much that fluctuated from there to there. Uh, 586 pips in two days back up. And then one, two, three, four days, all the way back down. So if you would have held, didn't move your stop loss too tight, gave it a, a couple days back here, just trailing it by a couple days candles, then you would have still been it from here. And then when it came back down, plus you see it bounced near this red line and then back up into the green line. Those are indicators we look at to determine exits, entries, and even stop loss adjustments. Came, settled here, and then when it broke through there, boom, bottoms away, yeah, it came all the way down. So now we put in a bottom, putting in higher lows, everything is looking good for a nice rally. You can see that it's starting to curve on the bottom, almost looking like it's putting in a real well-known chart pattern here. So I'm excited for this coming week and next week with this pair, Pound Aussie. If it drops, be looking for an entry. Going to be beautiful as it rallies all the way up, anywhere between 500 to 1,000 pips over the next two weeks. It could happen in 500 pips, could happen in two days. You saw it right here. Boop, two days. We could take off to the races, one, two, three, Four days, let's see, five days on that one. And we went from five days from there all the way up here. 
Oh, 1,000 pips in five days on that bounce. So the same thing could happen here, looking for a good entry. And then we will be off to the races. Chef Jeppy, Swiss cheese, Swiss sushi, whatever you want to call it. Switzerland against the Japanese yen. Put in a nice template over here. Check that out. Monthly time frame. You see we are pushing a very, it's called a supply zone. However, we've got a long bullish candle last month and a doji that's formed indecision. Are we going to drop? Are we going to pop? Very iffy for me. I think it looks like it's ready to go because of this closure of this last month's candle. Very strong closed over the last couple of years of candles. And then a doji indecision, it looks like Swiss might want to go higher. So still bullish on that at the moment. And here's the weekly time frame looking real good setting up here, but it's a very slow mover and it just gets in a, a consolidation back and forth. You just got to wait for it till it finally decides to make its move. So we called an entry around 113.30. We're at 114 up 70 pips. I think that is going to continue to rally, but we got to wait and see. Maybe it'll come back a little bit in this coming week before it bounces. Daily time frame. Well, ain't that interesting. Broker's not pulling through. Here's H4 time frame. Let's try it one more time. What happened here? Yeah, broker problem on that chart. They need to get that fixed. H4 time frame. Let's look over the last, uh, uh, that's since October. You see the triple top here and then it back down and then it broke above that area, came back down, very bullish pattern. So it just depends on what it's going to do. It could come back to 113.50, 113.30 one more time and then rally. Just got to wait and see. It could break down and come all the way back down here to 112. Uh, real iffy, but the overall consensus is that Chef Jappy is bullish, just waiting for the best entry pullback. You just have to wait it out. Okay, anybody out there have any pair you want me to look at? All right, if you haven't typed anything, we're going to wrap it up. So nothing as of yet. Uh, perhaps just if you could look at gold. I know a lot of people are looking at that at the moment. All right. All right, I'm going to do gold and then we're going to wrap it up. Perfect. So let's see what we got here on the monthly time frame for gold. Boy, ain't that a beauty. We are at 1808. We hit 18, 16, 17, 18, somewhere around there this past week, monthly time frame. And you see we have breached the highs from way back here, except for the uh, July and August, actually August and September high, way back here in 2011. So we're pushing that bound. And why do I think it's going to continue to go up? Gold is a safe haven. And plus, we're near this peak. And when you are getting to the end, what do you normally have when you know it's getting close to the end? Well, not this setup on these candles. You have long candles, exhaustion candles that will push, 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 push. So that's why I believe this is going to go past 2000. It's just going to probably next month, August, it's going to be a candle straight up 2000, 2200, 2400. And then the next candle, uh, maybe 25, 2700. Then we'll hit a peak, maybe around 2900, 3000. And then we'll come back to 2000. It's going to be interesting. So gold, great buying opportunity. It's still people say, what? We're almost at a double top. That thing is so far up there. Gold is a reserve standard for the world. It is what people flee to when there's uncertainty. We are headed toward digital currency. You still are going to have value in gold. That is not going away. So this digital currency that they are bringing out, uh, wanting everybody to function off of with Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, everybody's got a cryptocurrency for their company and whatever else. Well, gold is still it. Gold to 3,000. Could have a little pullback here, Brett break under 17, uh, under 1800 for this next week. Let's look at the week time frame. Still bullish, gold still going up. Look at these. Here's what I'm talking about. You got a breakout of the pattern, breakout, and then a slow consolidation, but it's trending up. And then boom, 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 long candles. That's when you know it's at the end, near the end. Well, what did it do? It consolidated for the next several weeks. Then a big drop off, consolidated down here, and then it started ramping back up. 
pushing, and then boop, big long candle, back down, big up, gap up, and then drop. So what I was saying is, you know it's going to change direction when you start seeing long candles. So it gapped up. That would have been a great selling opportunity because you see big up, big down, big up, and then a gap up, sell, selling sign. Then it fell for the next two weeks, and it came from 1700 all the way down to 1450. That's a lot of pips. Huge. Then it decided to bounce right here, went all the way back up, and then we've trended, consolidated over the next several weeks. Now it's a slow push up on the week. So even the weekly, no sign that it's going to slow down. We're going to probably pull back, like I said, come back to here around 1800, maybe a little bit lower, uh, 1790, and then we're going to push up. We may not. It may just be gap up, drop fast, and then rally. Uh, gap up, drop to set uh, 1800, and then rally to 1830, 40, 50 for the next week, and then the week after, and then we're going to start seeing the long candles. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And when you see that, you know we're getting close to the end. Could be two to four long candles. And then you look for a gap up after, like here, uh, normally it'll gap up and then rally a little bit. And that's when you sell after you've had two to three long candles. And the last candle is a gap up, a little push up. And that's when you sell the crap out of it because it's going to come back down. Okay, that is it. 3.40 Central Time, 4.40 Eastern Standard Time. Tokyo will open in a little while, and then we'll have London that will come around in a few hours. So you guys have an awesome week. If you're looking for a home, you want to learn how to trade, globaltradingarmy.com. Tell your friends, tell your family. We've got a great concept coming out in about four to five months. Once we launch, you will want to be a part of it. It's going to change the world as we know it, change one industry and impact lives all around the world forever. It's going to be amazing. So God bless you guys. Have a great week. J-Rock and team over and out. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.